Hi everyone, this is Kelly and it is November, I think 15th, it's mid-November, halfway through November and it's time for a planner update. I have done these every year and so of course we just have to keep going um, and, and do an update on the planner situation. I had the planner situation nailed down and then as usual, as friends do, my friend Patrick kind of messed that up. I'm grabbing some things over here, sorry. So, <clears throat> I'm going to recap real quick last week, or last, this year, and then I will get back to this. My planner system worked really well last year for basic planning. Um, so, last year I used the Midori um, inserts. Um, this is the second half, this is the first half. And this worked out really well for me. I use the year at a glance for, because it has a monthly year at a, at a glance. Here I can show it where it's not got all my personal information in it. <clears throat> it has a monthly year, to, you know, so you have one through 30 days. And I like to use this for my bills. My bills don't really change too much over the course of the month. So it's, in some ways this isn't necessary. However, <clears throat> it just keeps me on target on Sundays I like to sit down go over you know any but most of my bills have are automatically paid um, but I just like to go through check off what has been paid so that I know that I always go do sort of a weekly check-in on my finances on Sundays and then I go in and I set my schedule for the coming week uh, my readings are scheduled at seven days out right now um, and so I set my the week ahead schedule um, gets set here. So this layout has been perfect because I have this which I actually set my um, my classes schedule in here. So I had set up my class schedule, this is for 2021, um, but 2020 my whole class if, set schedule for the year is done. I need to get that done for next year um, because I really liked how that worked out. People knew ahead of time when my classes were and could save for them or plan that, you know, what classes they wanted to take um, and it just helped me to know what classes were. Um, when so I'm definitely going to do that again. In fact, that will be a um, Go on my to-do list for this week um, But so I did that again. I so so in your Midori uh, Travelers you have this you, two years at a glance then you have your monthly which I use for bills um, And then you have your weeklies and of course I use these for a week now What I've been doing here is sort of um, marking off a line This has been personal and or my I have a part-time part-time it was part-time and then it went down to quarter time I guess um, a regular job that I kind of kept tasks there I kept my personal you know appointments and information here I kept um, any astrological things here and then this side was more truth and story which I also kind of cropped off down here and I listed all my readings for the day and then videos classes information like that over here so I kind of split this up um, and it's worked really well I've had no I know a lot of people said their planners were useless for them <clears throat> in 2020 but mine was well used I was very so this was the first six months I was very happy uh, with how this worked out um, it really was um, quite perfect for me um, and you know continues to be so that was the plan the planner that I used um, I need to stick that back where it goes in a minute um, that was the planner that I used this last year and it has worked great. The one thing that didn't work so well is I like to track um, picture sticker picture my readings for myself because I like to make sure that my personal practice of reading stays on you know stays 
consistent. Um, as a professional reader, the first few years I found that my personal readings kind of slid um, to the wayside. And so not last year, but the year before, um, I made a concerted effort to make sure that I was tracking them to some degree. Nothing fancy. I just kind of write a, a succinct message of what, what I got out of it. And it just kept me in the rhythm of making sure my personal reading practice was um, on point. Now, this year I will say since um, pre COVID, so probably March or so, I really started doing a lot of personal readings on the floor in front of my ancestral altar. And I hadn't really tracked those, but it was super consistent. So I felt like my readings have been consistent this year for myself, but I haven't really, the tracking really went by the wayside with this system. So the, these are next year. So I planned on doing the same thing. I have the, you know, this is January through June, and then this is July through December. Um, I have the Midori inserts, and that was my intention for this year. Enter my friend Patrick. Um, he picked up um, a book called now, and let me just say, my friend Patrick uses this same system last year, and this year he bullet journals as well. And so this works for both of us really well. This weekly spread is super important. So when he ended up wanting to check this out, which is called Alephi, um, and this is the 2021, and this is by um, Cocorina, Cocorina brand. Um, and so... They did one last year, which I did not, obviously didn't get. I just showed you what I got. Um, and they have it based off of themes. And he picked it up and ended up really seeing that it fit what we were doing already really well with the weekly spreads. But it also had some of the more um, esoteric things in it. It had a little bit of journaling in it, but not too much. Like it seemed to be the perfect balance. So he picked it up and when he picked it up um, and then he of course did a walkthrough with me, I was like, oh, you know what that, and then and it had a sale. So then I picked it up and um, have kind of gone through and prepped it. So this is what I'm going to start to use for this year. Of course, I have these so that I can go back to this if I I need to um, but um, you can see I, it's black and white most of it's white but there are black pages so I do have some gold gel pens for paper crafting um, that I used in here um, I use gray a lot in my because it's not quite as harsh um, as black so I do like to use like dark gray pens this one is a Stabilo is that Stabilo yeah, this is a Stabilo and this is a Stadler. Um, so these are two gray pens that I use a lot in just writing in my calendar just because I, again, like that it's not quite as harsh as the black. But then I also have this black um, gel Sharpie that I'm enjoying as well. So those are the kind of pens that I have sitting here. So obviously where I need to write gold, I have. So let me zoom in a little bit so we can take a look at this. This is what I'm going to use this, try to use this year. A year of transfer skin shedding and healing I think that's great um, it is um, stitched really well so that it does lay flat really nicely which is something that's really important to me um, and so it's really focused on the moons which is something that I focus on anyway so it did seem like a really good fit um, so it talks about the planner it talks about the moon phases it talks about celestial events like meteor showers, full moon, new moon, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, and solar events, um, and how you might see those um, symbols that are going to be shown. Um, it goes through the zodiac wheel um, and how the, they define, you know, kind of keywords for the zodiac wheel and the dates when that is going to be shifting. Um, which is great. Um, it gives you your big year ahead like this. Uh, but then it also gives you your monthly. So I really like um, this aspect because I'm probably going to still use this for my bills. Um, but I'm also going to highlight when I have a lot of birthdays in my family. Um, my immediate family is quite large. And so um, I do keep um, track. I don't know if I stuck. I'm kind of prepping things. So I've been 
pulling stuff out and things like that. I don't know where I stuck it. But anyways, I keep a kind of a spreadsheet of all my family birthdays. And I think I will put the bills in, but then also highlight colors when there is a birthday or a special event day. And then the information would be in the day itself. So I think that's how I'm going to use that. Um, and then you have the year ahead, which is great um, just for... Um, I think I'm going to be using this for um, my mapping out my cards of the year and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end of this uh, I had a question asking me about the wheel of the year excuse me the wheel of the year and the the differences between the wheel of the year and the way that I look at it which is the astrological wheel of the year um, and I did sort of a long rambly um, answer to that on my patreon but I am going to add into this after this that sort of a succinct because it is really plays a part in my calendar year as well so I'm going to give a more succinct um, answer to that question sort of overview of how I see it um, after we take a look at this but I think I'm going to put like my cards of the month my cards of the of the season um, that type of stuff into here I haven't fully locked everything down I'm just starting that process again I'll still be using this for um, I believe for bills and um, highlighting at different colors for birthdays and you know um, anniversaries things like that so then it gives you a great overview of the moons of the year this is in the northern hemisphere um, not the southern and I know that she did a video on Instagram she talks about what they want to do with the southern hemisphere but right now this is is the northern hemisphere but because of where I particularly live um, the full moon and the new moon dates are shifted on three months and so I just went in with a gold um, pen and just you know marked where those were at but it's great to have the moon cycles of the year um, and then it goes into each month you have the month so the the month of purpose you have the crystal that you're going to be using for that month moldavite to see the bigger picture the zodiac sign aquarius vision and change the planet now i did go in and change i do use the classic associations to um, so where there are the outer planets, um, like Uranus, um, I use the older traditional uh, association of Saturn. Um, and so I have written those in, still keeping an eye on those, but um, adding in the traditional here. And then the full moon, it says, is a wolf moon, snow moon, cold moon, um, turn inwards and reflect. Um, then you have the January moon cycle, which this one didn't have any changes that I made. So you have that beautiful spiral of the moon for that month, which I love. When is the full moon? When is the new moon? Um, any kind of event like this has the quadrated, quadrated meteor shower um, and the dates of that. So any celestial events there. You have the, a beautiful rendition of the... Um, sign that January is in and it's the water bear and this beautiful um, uh, of the constellation and then Uranus um, fixed and air and, and I've just put um, Saturn up here so again traditional Saturn you have visions in progress, sort of what the, your vision is, what to pay attention to over the course of this month, um, the dates of the moons that to pay attention to and what to do, what is your vision, meditate on your vision, create your vision and release emotions at the last quarter, um, sort of uh, affirmation, I envision my most ideal future, and then you get into some of the, a little bit of the journal aspects of this, and there's not too much, I do feel like it's like just enough, what is my strongest vision for the year ahead um, and this month have faith in your journey find your personal freedom create special connections stay connected and with and meditate your vision take some time for yourself um, and then you have um, 
new moon and full moon which is something that i pay attention to anyway so i like having this make us just skin shedding and healing for these new moon and full moon for january some questions and some journal exercises to do on the new moon and the full moon and then you get into your planner aspect so you get a little bit three pages of sort of journaling stuff um, and then you get some at the end in reflection so it's enough but not too much it's kind of what what i'm thinking you get your month at a glance which i love i love months at a glances but i'm not i think i'm going to use this for my reading log um, so that i can um because i generally with with my readings get it down to a succinct sentence message. So I can definitely put that in here and then I will star it when I have a picture of it which will go into the actual day. So that's my thinking of how, because I, I don't need it for bills and things like that because I have that other area to do this, but I think this is gonna be a great way um, to have my keep track of any me messages that I want to remember because generally my calendar is open to the week at a glance I will use this I love this nice heavy brass Midori right that I can clamp and it kind of holds that down and this lays out even at the very beginning obviously in the middle it's easier but even at the beginning it lays out really flat and this is generally how my planners are kept um, because I'm looking at the week uh, I'm always working within the week um, here and so uh, obviously we have some days in which they are because we're just starting off the year so we have in faded color the end of January of December sorry um, and then we start with January 1st so you can see it gives you the date it gives you the moon phase it gives you some checkoff list which is perfect for my readings and um, work things because I list my readings in code like I don't give all of the information on there it would just be grand tableau <clears throat> you know written or video so like GT slash W um, and so I can actually list uh, a, quite a few of those on a line the way that I do it and when I'm done with it check it off I can list on here videos that I need to do um, posts that I need to make um, and that kind of Stuff. so these bullets are going to be um, work related for me and then this will be you know meeting Katie at 6 p.m. or lunch with Katie at noon or you know whatever this will be more <clears throat> personal which is again how I normally do it um, but just kind of more condensed but these are big boxes um, so I think this will work really well um, and give me plenty of space given I'm really in a smaller um because i normally pull a line down and i just have this little box here for readings that will be perfectly fine there i'm normally just listing what is the particular class and any videos this will work fine for that and i don't have tons of per i don't go lots and lots of places so this will give me plenty of room um, for what i need so that's kind of how i intend to do the week um, I will also be putting in down here at the bottom any astrological shifts and for that I use so my friend Patrick um, he has the living wheel astrology cards and we've been using this calendar for years literally years um, before he was making them to sell he would make them and we would print them out um, on paper um, and so I've been using this for a very long time. This is the 2021 coming up. He used to just have the wheel here, and now he because he um, keeps track of this much better than I do. So he keeps and puts all of so each of the months, right? You have what are the significant shifts? Like Mars is going to Taurus, Mercury is going into Aquarius, Venus is going into Capricorn, New Moon in Capricorn, Uranus direct, Sun and uh, moving to Aquarius, Full Moon in Leo, and Mercury. Mercury, Mercury retrograde for January. So all of the significant, at least ones that I want to pay attention to are on here. And this stays out in my working space, but these will get written into each. I haven't, that's my next thing I have to do is sit down and write those in so that I'm paying attention to those throughout um, the year. Um, so, um, so those events will go into here and then this will stay sitting out. Also things like the solstices and equinoxes. And so this is a great place to stop for a second and answer the question of sort of the difference between 
Because what I, what prompted this is that I was talking about Samhain, a uh, Halloween, and that I pra and I practice Halloween as the wonderful wondrousness that is Halloween, um, but that for me Samhain, that sort of more, um, which is a festival, which is on the thirty first, um, but the astrological cross quarter of fall is November seventh. So from November first through November seventh, I just have a personal in-depth ancestor practice um, there that keeps um, that I do and that was a video that prompted well what's why is there a difference between the astrological versus the festivals that you often see with the eight spokes of the wheel so I think this is a great um, calendar to explain that a little bit so the the wheel ha the year has been split traditionally or in a modern sense we think about the four seasons right we think about winter spring summer and fall right winter spring summer and fall that's sort of the main seasons but if you live in a climate in which well, any climate that you live in there are differences between the first half and the second half because I live in the northern um, part of the United States in the northern hemisphere um, I see a significant changes in my seasons right I have um, the beginning of winter is very cool, crisp, windy, um, and, and then the second part of winter is snow, <laughs> and a lot of snow. Um, the beginning of fall is very harvesty and bringing in the pumpkins and cornucopias and all that, and the second part of fall is very much the leaves are falling. Um, again, that wind is picking up, the leaves are falling, things are releasing um, at the end. So there are very significant difference between the two, and so there has been a breaking down of the seasons to eight parts, the first half and the second half. Um, and you saw this traditionally in different ways. The Irish people, the Celtic people, <clears throat> Um, did it by the cross quarters, some people did it by the solstices and the equinoxes, and then in, I believe, the 1950s, um, James Gardner, who, as well as some other people, I should pull my books out again, I did a more in-depth thing on this, but the people who started the Wicca, Wiccan religion, um, they pulled together uh, the cross quarters festivals and the equinox and solstice uh, festivals and pulled them all together to create what we know of as the wheel of the year and so these are looking at eight festivals that were not all celebrated by one group of people in history um, but in the uh, kind of per, per coming together with this new um, religion of Wicca or this revival of old into new however you want to um, describe Wicca they pulled them all together into what we think of as a pagan wheel of the year now again those were not all traditionally practiced in by one set of people in history um, but it has been pulled together and when we think of the wheel of the year that's what we think of right so we think about the winter solstice um, um, we think about Beltane and we think about Lanasa and we think about Samhain and we think about those hot those holidays or festivals um, and many pagans many witches certainly Wiccans follow the festival cycle of the of the year those those t quarters, um, you know, you're chopping the year into eight pieces, right? Those eighths, I guess I should say, are also, you know, you can divide your astrologically divide that. So, for example, the winter solstice um, uh, is on uh, December 21st. Um, versus there's some span of when the holidays tend to be taken um, and some of them meet up. You see the biggest shift when you move into, uh, let's say, um, go around here to October where Samhain, the hol holiday or the festival, um, is on October 31st, but the actual cross quarter is November 7th. So I have spent a couple years like kind of following the festivals it just never really clicked fully I enjoy the energy of them and I will dip into them um, I definitely dip into Samhain I definitely will dip into Beltane which is again 
both those they they are across from each other and they have a great deal of power this is when the lines or the um, veil between worlds is a lot thinner um, so I will dip into some of the festivals but what I follow for myself with the eight um, spokes of the wheel is more seasonal and so I'm looking at um, the winter solstice as the beginning of, of my year uh, on December 21st and then the cross quarter is this, um, February 3rd the winter cross quarter and we're in the second half of winter and then into the spring equinox and then the spring cross quarter the summer solstice the summer cross quarter the fall equinox and then the fall cross quarter um, versus the wheel of the year which is following the eight festivals the um wildwood tarot is if, if you're interested in that the wildwood tarot is a fantastic tarot that is built around the wheel of the year the druid craft tarot the 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 majors really follow the dance between the Lord and the Lady, so it's got that very pagan movement uh, of the stance of the Lord and Lady through there. Um, and then there's a great deck that I just recently got, um, which is called the Green Wheel Oracle. And this has oracle cards for all the moons and for all of the festival wheels of the year. So the other thing is the calendar right so i'm sorry they're starting to move garbage cans so let me pause so we obviously also have the um you know the fiscal year i suppose where we're starting with january and we're having the 12 months of the year and so how does this relate to year ahead readings um is that some people like to get year ahead readings where they get a reading, a card pulled for every month. And I'll show an example of that at the end of this video um, where you do a card for every month. Other people like to get wheels of the year and sometimes people do both. I mostly often, most often do both. And I'll talk about a little bit how I do that um, at the end. Um, but so that's that fiscal year, right? You also have the astrological seasons. <laughs> so there's just all kinds of stuff that's going on, right? Um, in terms of how we break down our lives, uh, the movement of the sun, right? Really the movement of the earth around the sun. Whereas the moon, we see a cycle within a month um, for the earth going around the sun, we see a cycle in a year. And so that can be broken down astrologically, that can be broke with the signs. So it would start the astrological year, I believe starts actually in um, spring. Um, and so then you would have that as your first um, beginning of the year. Uh, when, what the, when the sun moves into Aries um, is when that first day that it moves into Aries is when you're going to have um, the astrological and then it's going to move its way through all of the signs for the year or fiscally we start in January and go all the way around <clears throat> some people have their year start at Samhain that would be a very Celtic based thing to have uh, start but it's certainly pagans modern pagans um, do it in different ways whereas other people like myself my actual year starts December 21st on the winter solstice and goes around through the through the um, the eight spokes of the wheel on their astrological dates versus their festival dates. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop there for a minute, but this was a good um, example of and kind of answering that question. Oh, so that information will go into my, I haven't sat down to start to do that. Um, and then at the end of the month, there's sort of a recap um, where you can say what has shifted um, uh, in me since the last full moon, what were the main emotions I experienced, what have I learned from my struggles, what was January and one word, and so you kind of have an opportunity to, to reflect on the last month. And then it just starts to cycle through this throughout um, each of the months, obviously with different themes and different questions. Um, and then you have your, your month out of view, your week out of view, and then you have your recap um, and so on and so forth through the rest. Now, this also gave you January of 2022 
I'm going to have to do some work over here. Um, I'll probably just actually glue these um, pages together to seal them up. But what I ended up doing is putting in December because my month starts December fix that my month starts December 21st um, my year I really wanted December to be in here and we had I had all this extra space in here so I ended up um, changing everything out here sticking little stickers on here so that I could change the dates on there um, changing the full moon dates um, so that I have um, December in here um, because I would never use January I'm always eager to get into a new calendar but I always have my calendars before January so there's no reason for me to have January um, but I do like at the very end we have 2022 so any sort of future planning that is for the next year I'm able to do in, to, in, in this section so I do actually really enjoy having that there and then there's just some blank line paper which I will use for um, business tracking and things like that that I that I like to do so that is a look at the Elfie, 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 um planner by Coco Rena. I'll put a link in the description box to this. Um, when I purchased it, it was on sale. I don't know if it's still on sale or not or if it will go on sale again. I'm not entirely sure but I'm excited to use it. I think it has all the components plus it has a little bit of that extra um, you know planning ahead journaling and then reflecting journaling but not too much where it really overtakes the planner is what it feels like to me. So so um, that's where my intention um, is to give this a good go and see how that works. Now, I just want to do this because, again, I, I thought this was a good place to um, kind of answer that question in terms of, because it's part of calendars for me because I put all this in here. So I'm just going to use the Lost Forest here as an example um, because uh, the question was, two part one part was um, what is the difference between the wheel of the year versus the um, when I say the astrological date which we already talked about the wheel of the year are the combined eight festivals um, of uh, that that pagans um, and will and certainly Wiccans will, uh, will often follow those festivals um, the astrological dates is taking the year and the seasons and having the equinoxes and the solstices and the cross quarters and the astrological date when that cross quarter is that's the only difference between the two. It's I focus more seasonally um, and sort of the energetic turning of the wheel, um, sort of that whole process between uh, that the seasons bring about in growth, energetic growth, um, versus the individual festivals. And there's lots of overlap there because that's what the festivals do as well. I just don't put a lot of emphasis on the festivals and more what seasonal space are we in right now. Um, and then, of course, the fiscal or the modern year Year is January through December so if you get a wheel of the year reading um, then what you're doing is you're pulling a card so for me that starts at the winter solstice and then the winter cross quarter I might have these whopper oh, I have upside down winter cross quarter then you're pulling a card for the spring equinox and you're pulling a card for the spring cross quarter you're pulling a card for the summer solstice the summer cross quarter then you're pulling the fall equinox and the fall cross quarter or Samhain, right? So then you can, you know, these would also be the same for the eight festivals um, of the year. Then I pull from the bottom of the deck for a card of the year. And then I use the points. Am I still scroll? I didn't realize I scrolled down. Sorry. Um, then I use the points to get either pull a rune of the year if somebody wants the rune or if somebody want, or I pull a geomancy symbol by odd and even numbers of these um, solstices and the equinox, and that gives a, a geomancy sigil of the year, or I pull a rune of the year um, there. And so people generally get these around this time of the year because um, either leading up to Samhain, starting with Samhain, or most of the time my clients get them um, and they start at December 21st. 
um, but sometimes people do start it at that November 7th or on Samhain, right, or on November 1st, and this gives you that, and you can really see a lot with this reading. I recommend um, that you do one of these for yourself because think about how we're looking at the planting season, and we, have, we start with winter where everything is cool and clear. We're, we're thinking back over the year to come. Then in the cross quarter, we're thinking about, we're making our plans for what we're going to plant in the spring. We start to plant some seeds. The seeds are growing, lots of roots being built, going on underneath the surface here. We have the summer heat that comes in and we have to tend those crops so that they don't get burnt by the sun. We have to weed, we have to water, all of that, keeping that energy moving. We get to take a rest for a minute and celebrate in the summer cross quarter and then it starts to come into harvest time or but this harvest doesn't come magically it comes from all of this work that you've done then you start to harvest that energy in um, and then you start to release what you no longer need from that year in there and so you see this full energetic cycle with the wheel of the year reading which is fantastic the difference and then some people also either or i find that most people do one or the other and then some people do both like there have been years where i've done a wheel of the year with tarot and then i use animal deck and i do or um i do a year ahead monthly with tarot and then with the wheel of the year the eight the seasons i pick an animal card for the seasons um last year i just did a tarot wheel of the year that's what i did for mine um i know there's a lawnmower i thought they were done but no they're not done i'm just going to carry through oops i got these on a whopper job now so with a, a year ahead you're pulling for the month january february march april may june july august september october november and december i know this is messy then again pull from the bottom for the year the four quarters for a geomancy sigil pull a rune there as well and so this is giving you a month by month um card and two things happen here you see a big picture of energy cycle that is going to help you prep for the year but then throughout the year you're using that card not to say necessarily that oh um this the king of oceans is here i'm gonna meet the you know the man of my dreams or whatever or like that but more in that month when you're in the month of february the energy of the King of Cups is going to help you to navigate that month in some way. And so most people put their card of the month up where they can keep an eye on it. Um, I always have one up on my wall for what is my year card, what is my card of the season, what is my card of the month, right? And so I can watch those and say, okay, how is that helping me to navigate in each of these months? That card, that energy, focusing on that energy is going to help me to navigate in some particular way. Um, and so that's just broken into that fiscal these often are obviously people get them for starting with January but a lot of people also get these on their birth dates um, I have quite a few people who every year at their birth date they'll get a, a year ahead like this um, which makes a lot of sense right and for for your own personal path is starting on your birthday and going around um, and so it really gives you a lot to again see at the outset see an energetic movement um, but then in the individual months or the individual seasons with the wheel of the year how can that energy really help you to navigate that season so then all of this gets written into my planner um, so that I'm also paying attention to that as as that shifts and goes as well so they all do kind of tie together because as we are setting our planners up we're also doing these types of things so I hope this has been of some interest um, and of some help. Um, again, I have uh, lots of planner videos just because I've, you know, as I've gone through the phases of different things that I've tried. Um, and uh, for me, what I have learned um, is that what is essential for me in a planner is that it has a solid week spread because this is where I spend the majority of my time. Um, and then I like this edition because I haven't had this again. I'm going to use this to log my readings and I always like to have 
these for for bills and things like that and then you can either use this for forward planning for the whole year but you have the whole year in one book um, I'm going to use this um, I believe for my wheels my card of the years um, that type of information that I want to keep track of so I know the lawnmower is going to get closer and louder, so I'm going to wrap this up. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, let me know what plan in the comments below. What planner are you planning on using this year? Are you a planner person? Um, and I'll be interested to see what everybody is going to be using.